So in this example, we are modeling the shape of a cable that is suspended between two points. What I'm going to do to figure out the shape of this, uh, this curve right here is I'm going to pick two points. One, I'm going to start with this point right here where it crosses my um, y-axis. Uh, the point there just will happen to be at the very middle of that cable that's hanging between the two. And then I'm going to pick an arbitrary point somewhere over here, and I'm going to call this point here point one and this point over here point two. What I want to do is I want to model what's happening um, with the forces in play on these two. We've got a tension force acting in this direction, T1, and we've got a force acting in this direction, which I'm going to call T2. And I'm also going to label the angle right there of that point as theta. Okay, And I just want to look at from here to here, right, what all the forces are acting on that segment of the cable. Because the cable also has a weight, there's a force downward, which I'm going to mark as W. Now, since this system is stable, that is, it's in equilibrium, it's not moving, then that means all of these forces um, cancel each other out, because by Newton's law, if a um, object is in motion, it tends to stay in motion. If an object is at rest, it tends to stay at rest. So all the forces here should sum to zero. Okay? So, if I break down, for example, T1, sorry, T2, into its components, right, call this um, and this, if I put theta here, then this side right here and this side right here will have lengths. This will be the magnitude T2 cosine of theta, and this is the magnitude of T1 sine of theta. Well, not T1, sorry, T2. And this tension vector over here is simply going to be negative magnitude of T1 total. Okay, and just for notation, instead of writing it as this, I'm just going to use T1 without a bar over the top. So a bar over the top means it's a vector, and this is T2. I would just call T2. So here's what I've got. T1 is negative T1 in the I direction, I being that vector, the unit vector, I and J. Okay, so T2 then would be um, T2 cosine theta all times I plus, going up, T2 sine of theta j. Now that would imply all together, all of my i components have to add together to give me zero. So in the i direction, x direction I should say, I know that negative t1 plus t2 cosine of theta has to equal zero. And in the y direction, I know that I've got this component right here. So T2 sine of theta, which is up, minus W, the weight down, has to also equal zero. Okay? Since W, the vector, is negative WJ, it's a vector down with length W. So from this, I could say that W is T2 sine of theta, right? They are equal to each other. So here's where I get creative now. From here, I know that T1 is T2 cosine of theta. Notice this and this. If I were to write W divided by T1, I would get T2 sine of theta divided by T2 cosine of theta. The T2s cancel, and I'm left with tangent
oops, let me switch back to my right color, sorry, tangent of theta. Now what I like about tangent of theta comes back up to here, right? If, say this uh, point right here, if this, um, well, I'll, I'll say it this way. This represents a change in y at that point P2, right? And this represents a change in x. Tangent of theta is the change in y over the change in x. So as this guy right here goes to 0, then what you actually have here is dy dx. This, tangent of theta, this is the slope of the tangent at P2, which means it's dy dx. So what I can actually say now is I have a differential equation dy dx is equal to the weight of that segment divided by the tension at that point, um, P1. Okay, So weight on segment and this is the tension at midpoint. So if I had formulas or values for those two numbers, then this would mean I, my differential equation. All right, so in the, in the next example on the next page, what I'll do is I'll show you that in the case of a suspension bridge where the amount of weight across this segment is the same no matter where I go, on that suspended cable, then you get your parabola. Okay, um, let's call this point right here in the next example zero because it's got the x-axis at zero, and we'll say its height is a. We will call this height right here h. I'm going to label the full length of the bridge l, which makes this length here. L over 2. That's actually the x value right there is L over 2. And this would be negative L over 2. Okay, so picking an arbitrary point P2, I know that dy dx is the weight of vector on this segment divided by the tension at that midpoint. Okay. I also know that this height at zero is A because I've just arbitrarily labeled it as such. But here's the thing. What we're going to do is we're going to assume the weight of the cable is negligible. I think I've already got that written up there, negligible, but I want to say it again. So the actual weight of this piece is nothing, but the weight of the bridge here, if that's x, okay, is so large that the cable makes very little difference. Okay? Now, since they tell us that the weight is uniformly distributed at rho pounds per feet, then the weight of this, if it's a length of x feet, is going to be rho times x. Rho is weight per foot of bridge. Okay? So now what I've got is dy dx equals rho x over t1, which is a very simple, separable problem to solve. In fact, it's the simplest of all because you only have an independent variable on the right-hand side. So you have the integral dy equals the integral of rho over t1 x dx. So I just multiplied this across and integrated both sides. In doing that, I end up with y is equal to rho x squared over 2 t1 plus c. Now if I use my initial condition... I'll be able to find C. There's still a couple of unknowns. Rho is given, but T1 I don't know yet. I'll show you how to find that in just a second. So Y at 0 would be C has to equal A. 
So that means my function now, y of x, is rho over 2t1 x squared plus a. Okay, so how to find t1? What I'm going to do is use one more condition that y at l over 2 I know to be some height given to me, namely h. So that says h, if I plug it into here, where I put an h here and put l over 2 there, I get h is equal to rho over t1 l over 2 squared plus a. And I'm going to skip the steps, but just with algebra, I'm going to show you that um, what you get when you solve for t1 and plug in is that y is 4h over l squared x squared plus a. So if you know the height, you know the length, you now have a formula for the bridge, and you know the height at the midpoint. You know the shape of that curve. All you need to know is height, length, and height at midpoint. And now you've got a parabola. Okay. Now I mentioned to you in class that I would show you why this thing is not a parabola when there is no weight. Um, there's no bridge down here. The key that makes this a parabola is that the weight of the cable is negligible. Where this gets tricky is if you don't have the bridge without the bridge the weight depends on length of cable. Instead of horizontal distance this way it depends on how long the cable is as it moves. So this formula in here becomes much more complicated. And we'll cover that in chapter 5. Alright, that's what I had to say about that. We'll stop there.